Oh, I'm a unicorn. Yeah, I don't exist. Oh, okay. Yeah. But initially, I was unsure. I didn't know if you had a serious side. I didn't know if you were honing in on me or if I was, you know, um, secondary. Hey, guys, and welcome back to Little Blue Book Baby. Fan of apple just tastes like tango apple. Don't get it. I mean, I mean, get it because I need advertisements. Get it. Anyway, listen, guys. We're back with another part of the Ready to Love, baby. And it's going to be our first of the actual kind of body language that we're going to do. I didn't do it doing it in the first two videos. But I hope you're liking the content so far. Make sure if you're new to the channel, you like, share, subscribe for those who are returnees. You ain't got the minerals, baby. Listen. <laughs> Woo Chile. Woo Chile. It's getting hot in here, baby. It's getting what? Hot in here, baby. Say with me. Woo. Chile. It's gonna be hot in here, baby. And if you can't handle the heat, get out the what? Kitchen, baby. If you can't handle the heat, get out the what? Kitchen, baby. Are you mad? You mad? You lean. Little black book, you know what time it is. Again, gay. Let's get into the video. We're gonna be talking to you guys about London and Lexus, and this is one of my interesting ones because when I watched it, I was like, mm, 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 mm. there's so much going on, we didn't even notice. I'm kind of drawn towards sincerity. I need to know if there's more to his story than just the guy that tells jokes. So in the back of my mind, that a girl with attitude like that always has a backstory. There's a reason why she became that girl. It's not that she just became that girl. Do you understand? Um, and I feel like, you know, she's softened up as she's come into the process now. Um, and, you know, we're starting to see a more, I guess, another side of her in the sense of the vulnerability, right? Uh, because that's the truth. When you become that hard nut, there's a vulnerability side of you, yeah? There's a vulnerable side of you, which you're shielding, yeah? That's why you put that front up. You ain't a bad guy, you know what I mean? You ain't a bad boy. You're just, shy, you're just shielding that vulnerability, you understand? Um, but more so women than it is men, because men often don't, we, <laughs> like, they don't often show that vulnerable side, but women often do. All right, cool. So, when it came to London Alexis, I think one thing that I picked up on with London uh, Alexis, sorry, what she said was that, you know, people often misjudge her, um, you know, and they, they put her down as this trophy wife. And, you know, she, you can see that she wasn't comfortable with that particular term. As much as it, it may be an accolation, adulation or, you know, ascribed um, um, goodness, necessarily it's not a great trait to have or it's not a, it's not a great thing to be labeled as because it's basically saying that you know you're someone's eye candy on their arm you know what i'm saying like we want to be more than that everybody wants to be more than that and nobody wants to really be a trophy husband or wife you understand you want to be more than that and she sees herself more than that i i know that she's probably played into that in the sense she's used the fact that people might think she's a trophy wife to get into spaces that she ordinarily wouldn't normally get into. But because she's been labelled that, and people see her as that, or maybe perceive that, she uses that same, she uses that energy for her own good, right? That's how she got into playing with the London team, you understand? Now, one thing I wanted to talk about was obviously London and, and, and the Alexis connection, because it's quite interesting the way that divine, and the way that um, London and Alexis were actually looking at each other on the table, right? So you see, the first thing you see is the intensity in um, London's eye contact with Alexis. It's almost as if he's boring his eyes through her, but it's almost as if he's really forcing himself to pay attention. Like, it didn't, I'm not saying it didn't feel, I'm not saying he wasn't being natural, but it almost like there was, there was an extra intensity to really pay attention. Like when you're really trying to like, really like, I'm trying to really deep you, I'm really trying to understand you, I'm really trying to, and it's almost like you're trying too much. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's what I was noticing about. If you watch the intensity of his eyes, there's a huge glow in them. Like, he's really trying to concentrate on what she's on, on her, isn't it? And really trying to show her that he's attentive to her, right? Um, and maybe for a lot of women, that actually works. You know, someone like Divine, that works. But with London, um, as she stated, she's not really sure about um, um, about London, which I already, which we already knew because... For her to, to, to get excited a little bit about Jimmy and Jimmy's heart, that let me know that she still had a backup plan. Yeah, that's the backup plan was Jimmy. Yeah, she wanted to kind of make sure that, uh, do you know what, I, I don't know how genuine London is, but I'm going to keep my backup. Because it is a game, at the end of the day, it's a dating game. As much as I don't like it, but this happens in real life. You know, you have your backup plan just in case it doesn't go well down. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't go down well. You have a backup plan. So when I, watched, I, I was watching London, I just watched the intensity of his glare on Alexis and it was not on 
uncomfortable, but it was just he was just pouring a lot of um, attention, a lot of eye into her. Um, and you know when she mentioned about she was drawn, she London said I mean Alexa said obviously she's drawn to sincerity. I think that is where Jimmy got a chance. Yeah, and you know what? Um, I always say this: girls sometimes like Alexis will say, "Oh, you know what? This guy could have had a chance, but he blew it." No, he never. He never. He never had a chance. You have to understand this. They never had a chance. You understand? They never had a chance. What you would have done is got with them for a few days, a few months, and ditched them. They never stood a chance for long-termness. You understand? Um, because you already made up your mind. You see, we give chances to people who we believe we are compatible with or who we like. When we don't really like them, we just, we're hoping for something to turn us off. And, and for her and Jimmy, it wasn't necessarily that she didn't like Jimmy or maybe she didn't find, not that she necessarily didn't find him attractive. It's a case of, look, I'm not, I'm not fully there like that with him. So I kind of need something to turn me off. But I'm going I'm to keep it open. I'm going to keep my mind open for it. Do you get what I'm saying? When he gave the heart, she, her mind was open to it. Then obviously when he did a chatty chatty patty, she was like, that is what, that's the excuse that I needed to dead it. Yeah? That's why she could easily dead it at the end with Kimba. Here. You know what? I'm going to pass that heart on to you, sister. Ooh. Oh, wow. I don't need that heart. And to say, well, do you know what? I'm going to give the heart to you, Kimba. She ain't trying to, she ain't, she ain't trying to help Kimba. She's trying to let the levels know, listen, I don't need him. I never needed him. He was never on my radar. And Kimba picks up on that by saying, like, Jimmy was chasing after a girl didn't really want him. Yeah. That's the honest truth. She was never really chasing. So it's like, although she finds Jimmy the sincere kind of guy, remember, I said this, we don't go after something, oftentimes we don't go after, when you're in a place of pain and hurt, you don't often go after what you need. You often go after what you want. Yeah, you, you see, you, you are trying to lose weight. What you should be eating is healthy, but you want fish and chips and chicken and chips. It's not going to help you, but that's what you want. That's not what you need. You understand? So with Alexis, let me tell you something. Girls like Alexis, in fact, girls in general and guys in general, say these kind of lines where, and she didn't necessarily say it, but by giving back the, the, the heart, we know that she never really was feeling Jimmy like that. Because she, should not, she didn't need to give it up. Remember, she's competitive. So why give it up? Why, why not continue? Do you know what I'm saying? She ain't got, do you know what I'm saying? So either, if you gave up Jimmy like that so easy, either you ain't got the heart that you keep saying that you have in terms of being a competent, competitive person, or two, you never really liked Jimmy in the first place, so it was easy to give him up because you, you're focusing your efforts now on London. Do you get me? It's simple as that. That's the way it was. Do you understand? Um, so yeah, that was, that was interesting. Um... But I can understand now where Jimmy came into the play. Because it, Jimmy does seem like a sincere guy. Um, and I, I noticed the way he jokes and laughs. But then, you know, when he has a deep conversation, he's having a deep conversation. And I think from, that can be endearing. Um, and maybe she saw something that she connected with, with the way he behaved. But she never had him on his radar. Um, never had him on his radar, unfortunately. You know what I mean? Like, it's quite interesting. London will say, look, uh, do you know what? People misjudge me. Um, and, and, and yeah, they often misjudge me from the jump, right? But watch his body language. Like when someone's going to talk about something that's really deep to them, something really personal to them, the body language changes. Um, they become either withdrawn, but you see it in the eyes, or they become really expressive, and you see it with the hands, right? But what you see is the intensity of his eyes are still burning. So either he's telling he's telling us something that you know people mis often misjudge me. He's smiling and burning with his eyes, and it's like. He's not telling her, he's telling her the truth, but he ain't telling her nothing deep. This is nothing, he it's not nothing he hasn't said before. It ain't nothing that he doesn't say, he doesn't tell women all the time. It ain't nothing new. It doesn't hurt him to say it, it doesn't, doesn't burn him to say it. It's nothing new. Now we know this because later on, when he does begin to confess about what happened in his past, you see there's a slight change of demeanour. The body language opens up, he begins to speak, hands start to come free because when he was explaining about the people misjudge me, his hands locked in. Perception is something that I have fought with for so long. Mm -hmm. He stayed here, he kept his eye on her and burnt, his eyes were intense. The moment later on when he's explaining the fact that, you know what, his parents divorced, watch the dullness in his eyes come in. Because yeah. my parents got divorced when I was probably about seven years old mm -hmm. and I went to California with my mom my dad stayed in Houston and you see that because now he's changed the demeanor now what he's letting you know is that I'm going I'm going down another level I'm going down another level 
I'm now letting you I'm now letting you know a little bit of a level which I don't often I don't let everybody know. Yeah? You're not at a deep level yet, deep deep, but you're at another level. You understand? Because the eyesight changed the eye changed. Yeah? And but then the eyes came back, you saw the energy come back when you explained halfway through. Because necessarily the he didn't go deep with the conversation. So he got to know Alexis and Alexis explained some things, but he didn't really go deep deep, you understand? Um, so when I was watching Alexis as well, you know, when I was watching Alexis, um, it was interesting because the way she was watching him, her eyes were wide, they were, she, was, she was trying to, she also too was also trying to pay attention, but you don't see the same intensity of a glare from her to him. Um, and, and I think maybe because maybe she was trying to study him a bit more rather than he, I think he, I felt like he was just really trying to not un unnerve her, but just kind of like, like I said, he was just trying so much to try to like pay attention. He wants to show that he's keen, and it's like, mm, yeah, bro. But you, then there's 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 no vulnerability really there that you were letting letting her into anything. Do you get me? But it's early days. I can't really say too tough. As she's explaining, um, I think it's part way through. Then he also also as well begins to shift his, his he begins to change his eyes intensity also. As she starts to explain some of the stuff that she feels about life and things that happened to her, his eyesight begins to dull a little bit. Because now he's showing empathy and now he's trying to show that he's listening to her and actually trying to match her level. Um, whereas beforehand he was really trying to show that he was attentive. Now he's got to a place where he's actually going, you know what, I'm actually listening to you. I'm actually hearing what you're saying now. I'm now, I'm now rocking with you a little bit and actually going with you on this journey as you're talking about your thing. And, you know, Alexis is smart, you know. She's not committing. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. Alexis is smart. She's not committing, okay? Uh, she's smart, but also she doesn't trust London. I need to be right here. If you can focus on me, then we may have a chance. That's a simple format. Um, she does not trust London. The key word she said is that if you can focus on me, then maybe. Now, when you put then maybe, you're not 100% sure. Yeah? She's not committing. That's what she's saying. I'm not committing. You know, I'm going to wait for you to move, then I'm going to move. I'm not moving until you move. And that's what she said. When you say, if you can focus on us, it's, she started with an if. If you can focus on us, then maybe. So look at this. None, none of those sentences were sure. None of them were, 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 were sure statements. They were, they were neither here nor there. If, which is like probability, potentially, you know, you focus on us, then maybe, uh, you know, we'll see what I want. You understand? Because remember, she's playing a game. She's being competitive here. She wants to be smart. She wants to make sure also she doesn't render her heart um, unnecessary to a guy that potentially might not want her. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was very conniving, very really smart and clever. I watched it and I was like, hmm. And, you know, like I said, because she's competitive, it was quite interesting. Um, you notice the way that she kind of um, changed, like, you saw the way that she obviously kind of like, her face kind of changed a little bit when I think Divine said, um, no, when she when she said, well, sorry, she she mentioned obviously that you know me and him have been met, have been talking every day, you know, since and kind of kind of getting closer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I saw Divine's face change, and I was like, girl, if you dance, there's magic in the air. So girl, don't close your eyes. I don't know what song I'm singing, but um, so yeah, I saw that and I was like, okay, competition on. Um, and Alex, and Alexis is letting Divine know I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to play. And like I said, it doesn't mean just because she's ready to play doesn't mean that she's ready to actually entertain a relationship with London. She's ready to play. There's a difference. She's competitive. She likes that. Do you understand? Because um, even her, you know, she didn't go anywhere deep with what her situation was either. Yeah. She just, you know, specifically said, you know, look, people misjudge me. You know, that's not how I am. And do you know what I mean? Blah blah, blah and da da da. da. But if you watch her too, she wasn't actually also being very deep and open and honest. And when I say open and honest, I mean that she wasn't being free with it all. She was actually being self-contained. And people often do this when they are not sure of the individual's intentions. When you've, got, when you've been hurt in the past and you become smarter and wiser, you don't just throw your heart out there. You don't just throw out all the information. You throw out information that you're okay and comfortable with being spread about you. Do you understand? And that's what happened with, um, with London and Alexis. So it was very interesting. They're both playing the game. None of them actually really went deep with what they really are, what they're doing, what, how they feel, what actual things were happening in their life. And obviously it's because of early doors, but 
you know, they never really, really went deep. And that, that was shown clearly by the way they behaved towards each other and the body language as well. What I would say is that, um, um, that, you know, you know, and, and then just to top it up as well, because London, I mean, Alexis obviously ditched, um, <laughs> Jimmy and, uh, Terrell. Um, and I think that's when, um, Jimmy then clocked Ra. Do you know what? Nah, 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 nah. This ain't for me. This ain't for me kind of thing. Um, and which was interesting. Um, because we're, we're going to talk about that in another video about Jimmy and Kimba. But, you know, this happens in real life to everybody. Yeah? Remember not everybody. Some people are blessed. They just have the fine looks. But a lot of us have been in a situation where our main target drops out and we look at the other targets. Yeah? It happens. In fact, that's how people get married. That's how people end up being together. The main target that you were going for drops out and you're like, Ciao. I better go with my other targets then. Do you get me? So it, it, it's it's and, and, that, and that's a, and that's a story in itself because you have everyone. A lot of girls and guys have targets who are not really targets. They are time wasters. They are people who are there to fulfill a role. Like you have four guys on the go, yeah. But two of them you'd never get with, but you're keeping them there for just in case you become decrepit, old, disabled. If you become unless you, <laughs> just in case you become ugly, you break a leg and become disabled for life or whatever, and you and you lose all your buying power basically. Yeah, that's the only way you're ever going to get them, if you lose your buying power. Other than that, you'll never get with them. Yeah, they're just there to make up the numbers and the time and to fill your ego. And that's what I said about, that's what I was saying about the, the, the Alexis and, and Jimmy situation. Like, he was never getting a chance. He was never a consideration. That's why they never went on a date. And Jimmy mentions that. That's why they never went on a date. That's why they're never going to go on a date. What well, they might do in the future, you know, just for her to kind of use, it, use him against London. But... They're not going to go on a date, you understand? So, for me, it's interesting. I look at it and I go, mm, 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 mm. And, you know, we're going to talk about the Kimba and the Jimmy situation. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Let us know what you're thinking, what your mind was telling you. Comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. Let's have a discussion. And we're going to get it, baby. Listen, if you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, get out. If you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, baby, get out. Are you mad at your mad at your lean? Little Blackbuck, you know what time it is. You already know what time it is. Uh, get gay, baby. Are you mad at your mad at your lean? Woo, chill out.